Here at Live Free Church, we're empowering people to live a life of freedom through Jesus Christ. So get ready to hear a life-changing and life-empowering message from our guest speaker. All right, all right. Now, I, um, as I was preparing for, for this morning, I, I was asking God, Lord, what is it that you would have me to say? Which direction would you have me to take? And he gave me something that I need. Gave me something that I want to hear. And, and it's, it's, it's just like with, when the word of God comes, it should come to you first before you can give it to anybody else. Until you can receive it, until you can, you know, allow it to manifest in your life, you can't give it to anybody else. The problem that often we have is folks are trying to give out to somebody what they have not, you know, been able to observe themselves. Yeah, you've heard it, but but are you living it? You've heard it, but is it manifest in your life? So don't try to give me something and it's not really manifested in your life. Amen. So, so what God gave me this morning, I want to encourage you. I want to give you hope that your life is not over, that, that your course is not finished, that no matter what you see before you, God will still bring you through. No matter what you feel like, no matter how many obstacles have come your way, don't give up now. Don't give up now. If God has placed a dream or a destination or a word in your heart that, that doesn't seem like it's going to come to pass, and sometimes we'll get to certain ages in life and say, well, I guess that, you know, that's, that time has passed for me. I'm, I'm, what else God has for me? But if God has placed something down in you, and you know that it's the word of God. I don't mean something that, that just, you know, you want to do. But something that God has placed down within you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what stage in life you are in. I don't care if you're married or you're single. I don't care how many children you have. I don't care if you're rich or you're poor. If God has placed it within you, don't give up because it will. It will. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Don't give up. Let's go to our, our, our scripture this morning, Hebrews 10 and 36. If you have your electronic devices or your, your paper Bible, go ahead and turn to that. It says, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then, somebody say then. Then, then you will receive all that he has promised. Then you will receive all that he has promised, not some, all that he has promised. Patient endurance. You know what that is? Perseverance. Perseverance. You can't give up now because you're too close. You're too close to your promise. You're cl too close to the dream that God has placed within you. You're too close to God, what God has promised to you. You got to persevere. Somebody say persevere. 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 You can't throw in the towel. Persevere. God can make you a promise. But you never possess it if you don't. God can tell you something that he's got planned for you, but if you don't persevere, you'll never receive it. Just because he, he said it, and yes, God never changes. God is God. But you've got to do something too. If you don't persevere, you might not ever receive the promise. Theodore Roosevelt said this. He said, courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have any strength. <laughs> courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have any strength. It's pulling up from the inside of you when you can't do anymore. When you've done all that you can, when you've given all that you can, when, when, when you've Go on your last mile when you feel like it's all over, pulling up something else out of there. Because I'm a witness that if you, if you reach down to, to, to pull something else up out, God will give it to you. You, you, you remember the widow with, and, and, and this is not in my message, but I'm trying. You remember the, the widow with the, with the, with the batter, barrel uh, uh, meal and, and, and the oil? And the, and the Bible said that she gave to the man of God, uh, the last that she had, the last. 
But then what the Bible said her barrel never failed. So, it, and, and, and just in my imagination, what I see is not that she had a full barrel every time she went, but every time she went and got a little more. Every time she went, it was, it was empty before she went in there. But when she dug down in there, it was something there. So what I'm telling you is when you feel like you've given all, when you feel like you've done everything that you can do, reach down there and, and get a little more because God is going to put it in there for you. He will do it. He will do it. I want you to know, first I'm talking to myself. First I'm talking to myself. I faced a lot of things in the last three years. Try not to get emotional. But I faced a lot of things in the last three years. And I tell you, to be honest, I wanted to give up. Matter of fact, I said I didn't want to hear anything about God. I don't want to hear anything about, about church. I don't want to hear anything about ministry. I was done. I was done. Death in my family. My, my, my father passed away. Sickness in my family. My, my, my mother got COVID and almost died. I was forced to move to a, another state. Leaving everything that I knew. Sickness that, 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 that you know, medical science says there's no cure for. I'm saying don't give up. Don't give up. I have made up in my mind. I have made up in my mind now. Through all that I've gone through and through everything that I'm going through even now, I'm going to ride this life until the wheels fall off. I'm going to do what God has called me to do until, until I can't do it anymore. And I'm talking to somebody today, today who feels like giving up. You feel like, you know, you, you've thrown in a towel. And you feel like there's nothing else left for you to do. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. It may seem like it's distant. It may seem like it's never going to happen. It may seem like you're never going to get there. Doors have been shut. Things have been happening. But better is the gift from God than anything you can get in this world. God has opportunities. He has blessings. He has open doors for you that you have no idea of. Every dream and every aspiration, every hope and idea comes from God. The Bible teaches us that, that every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. Every good gift. So if he's given you something, it's a good gift. And he doesn't intend for you to just Throw in the towel on it just because it gets hard. And 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 let me let me get on through here. You can never get there where God wants you to go. You can never get there until you're dissatisfied with him. You can never get there until you're dissatisfied with here. Too many times we get satisfied, comfortable with here. This, well, this is just my lot in life. This is just what my life has come to. This is just where I'm going to be. But I cannot become stagnant and satisfied with where I am when God has something for me ahead of me. And God has something ahead for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up until you receive what God has promised to you. Let's go to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, chapter 6. Beginning at verse 1. It says, Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. 
And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. I have given Jericho into your hands. I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. Verse 3 says, you and your fighting men. Hold up. Let's, 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 let's take a look at that a little closely. You and your fighting men, be careful who you take on your journey. Be careful who you take on your journey. You don't need somebody on your journey who's always talking down, who's always talking negative, who's always trying to bring you down. You say, you know, God told me to do. Are you sure that's what God said? <laughs> if somebody can shake you off what God has told you, then maybe God didn't tell you. But if God has really told you, God has really placed something within you, don't bring folks along that's going to drag you down. Don't bring people along that's going to make you feel like you're crazy for what God has told you. Don't bring people along who, who, who every time you talk up, they talk down. You know, uh, uh, Michelle Obama said, when they go high, no, no, when they go low, we go high. Well, when, when, when somebody goes low with you, you, you stay high. And I tell you what, there are two, two things that's, that are going to happen if, if you continue to move forward in what God has called you to do, what God has told you to do. If they continue to talk negative to you and you continue to talk positive to them, they're going to either stop hanging around you or they're going to get with you. So you and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with priests blowing the horns. Verse 5, when you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. Mm. Joshua 6 is, 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 a, is a very interesting uh, chapter. It's interesting because God has been telling the people for over 40 years, there's a promised land for you. There's a place for you. I prepared a special place for my people. All these 40 years, they were walking around in circles. <laughs> Will it go around in circles? Yeah, they either walked around in circles. They walked around in circles. And most of them saw their parents die in the wilderness. Because uh, uh, the majority of these people here, now we're talking about 2.5 million people. Now, now, most of them now, their parents are, are, are dead, and these are children who have grown up hearing these stories of promised land. That's all they've heard, promised land. But never seen a promised land, but they've been hearing about promised land. But I ain't never seen no promised land, but I'm hearing about a promised land. So now they're getting to a place where Joshua, God is speaking to Joshua and telling him that you're going to conquer this land. And this, this is just the first phase first phase of your, of your conquering. He says, you're going to go into a conquered land that I have already given you. Hmm. That, that's, that's, that's strange. If you gave it to me, why do I have to conquer it? It's, it's, it's mine, but I, I, I can't get into it. It's mine, but I have to fight for it. It's mine, but I can't, I can't experience all of the good things that it has for me. It's mine, and, and, and you say that it's mine, but my heart don't know it's mine. <laughs> it was theirs, but they were yet not living there. I think a lot of Christian life is like that. 
God has blessed us, the Bible says, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So everything in Christ is supposed to be ours, right? Everything that, that, that is in Christ should be ours. It means that we should have the peace of Christ. We should have the joy of the Lord. We should have the strength of God. We should have healing. We should have prosperity. We should have provision. We should have all of this. But many times we don't. And I know, I know, uh, we, we, we say we walk in faith and uh, I'm walking in prosperity, but you're broke. <laughs> I'm walking in healing, but you're sick. Wow. We, we, we got to understand that God, God is not telling us to, to confess lies. What he's telling us to do is understand where we are, but believe him for where we're going. Yeah, I might be broke today, but I'm believing God is going to bring me to a prosperous land. Yeah, I might be sick today, but I'm, I, I'm, I believe God is going to bring me to healing. And, and another thing, and, and I know this, this, this may go against you know, some of your theology, but if God has promised us certain things, sometimes we may not see it on this side. He, I've seen many people who are professing health who died. Many people who were professing prosperity who died broke. Just because a promise is given, that doesn't mean you're going to see it on this side. But what we are to do is not, not stop, not stop. Just keep pressing forward to, to, to whatever God calls us to do or whatever God has for us. I might not have it in this life, God, but I'm trusting you because I know wherever I go, you're going to be with me and you're going to give me the strength to go through whatever I have to go through. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. God says, Joshua, you're finally going in. Finally going in after all this time. You, you grew up hearing all these stories. You grew up, you know, with, with, with Moses and, and, and the rod and all that and crossing the Red Sea. You saw all that stuff. But now you're finally going to get to go in. But it wasn't that simple. It wasn't. There were some things that they had to deal with. Now, when God gives you a promise, when God calls you to something, when God promise you some, promises you something, there are things that you're going to have to go through in order to receive what he's called you to receive. Why? Just, we just read God said that he had promised them the land, but they had to conquer in order to get the land. Just because God promises it to you doesn't mean that you're going to get it now. Just because God promises it to you doesn't mean that you're not going to have to go through to get it. I think the main, main reasons that we stop short of receiving what God has for us and we don't really persevere to where we should go. And there, there are three things that I want to highlight here. And if you're writing down, you can write these down. Number one, the first reason is because our perspective gets blocked or skewed. Our perspective gets blocked. What do I mean? There was a wall around Jericho. They couldn't see what was in there. They couldn't see what was going on. And though they were promised Jericho, they didn't know what Jericho entailed. All they saw were these big walls. Now, they did have the spies who went in and told them what, what were in there, but as a whole, they really didn't know what was Jericho all about. Now, there was only uh, a few miles around Jericho. People think that Jericho was this huge place. No, no. It, it, it was approximately, uh, maybe it would take them an hour or so to walk around. But think about it. Think about it. Getting to this place, Jericho, and start, starting to walk around one time. Now, now, think about this. Now, this is something that we seldom hear. God told Joshua, 
what to do. Nobody else knew. They were walking around Jericho because Joshua said it. They didn't know how many times they were going to be walking around. They didn't know when they were going to be uh, uh, invading Jericho. They were just following Joshua said. Now think about it, walking around this, this, this walled, walled city and not knowing what you're going to do when you're going in. Remember, they've been hearing this all their lives, 40 some odd years, and now they're at the place where they're going in, and you say, walk around. Walk around the walls. Okay. You know, they're, 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 they're hyped up. They're ready to go. Let's, let's, let's get this. You know, we're, we're, we're at the city. Let's, let's bust in and, and take this city. No, let's walk around. <laughs> and they didn't tell them how many times they were walking around. So they walk around one time. Joshua, okay, all right, that's good. Let's, let's go back to the camp. Can you imagine people who are with them saying, what? Wait a minute. I thought we were going to invade. No, no, we, we, we're just walking around today. Go back to camp. Get up the next day. All right, everybody, let's go. Oh, yeah, they jump up. Yeah, all right, let's do this. No, let's walk around. At the end of the walk around, let's go back to camp. Can you imagine that? But think about your life. Think about how many times God has spoken to you, how many things God has promised to you, and you feel like you're, you're at the place now. You're just about to get it. Nothing happens. You come to church, and, 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 and church is high, and the spirit is moving, and, and you say, this is my day. This is my night. And the preacher comes up and he said, this is your day. This is your night. <laughs> and you come up and he lays hands on you and you go back to your seat and you're the same way. <laughs> Expect your miracle. <laughs> and he points right at you. That's got to be God, right? <laughs> but nothing happened. So they walked around, they walked around. Now, I can imagine, and I, I'm just thinking in my own limited imagination, the, the guys walking around, because he's got his fighting men, right? You know, these, these, these are not, and I say this, Rudy Poots. These, these, <laughs> these, are, these are the fighting men. These are, whoa, come on, let's do it. And, and, and so... They're ready to fight. They're, they're pumped up. And I can imagine them talking to, to, to each other while they're walking around. Hey, man, what's, what's up with Joshua? I thought we were going to fight. No, man. No, man. Joshua just, man, he's lame. <laughs> but, God, but God promised us this place, didn't he? Yeah, he promised us to him. But Joshua, he's just a coward. He just... You know, talking about some walk around. We can walk around when we get to heaven. <laughs> but I can imagine them, them, them talking to one another and, and, and just kind of you know, wondering what's going on. Joshua just as, as confident, confident as he could be. Four, five, six times around. But nothing happened. And this is, this is one of the reasons why our, our perspective is blocked or skewed, because we don't see what's happening. They have heard, even in this case, they hadn't heard, but they didn't see or hear. That's frustrating. That's frustrating. How many times have you known that God was going to do something for you, but you don't see or hear nothing happening? Yeah, God, you said, you said it was going to happen two years ago. And then we get to the place where we just feel like giving up. Going on to the next thing. But just, just starting out on this journey, starting out on this fight with the 
people of, of Jericho. They felt like, we've got this, but when are we going to start? So let's unpack the story a little bit. We've been, we've been looking at uh, how long they've been in the wilderness. We've been looking at what has happened to them while they were in the wilderness. But Jericho was their first major battle. So they, so they, they, really, they really weren't ready as much as they thought they were had God not been with them. They thought they were ready. They really weren't as ready as they thought they would had not God been with them. So once their perspective is blocked because of the walled city, they think that, okay, how are we going to get at this? How are we going to break down this wall? We're just walking around the walls. We don't have any equipment to tear down the walls. So what's going to happen? We can't get in the gate. The gate is closed up. What's going to happen? And we have walls when we look to what God has for us. There are walls effective. I can't see how God is going to do this for me because I credit it. I don't see how God is going to do this for me because I don't have a degree. I don't see how God is going to do this for me because I'm sick. I don't see how God is going to do this because my marriage is failing. I don't see how God is going to do this for me. These walls But we've got to be able to see past the walls. And we've got to have help to see past walls. Have you ever, when you, when, when you were a, a child, and, and maybe even since you've been an adult, come to a, a fence or a wall that you needed help to get over? You know, they, you have a friend, you say, they put their hands down and they step in. You need help to see over walls. And the way that we get our help in the body of Christ is we need a, a community of believers to help us to see over walls. You need people who believe like you believe, believe, believe that God can bring you to where you're supposed to be. We have to have a, a family of believers who will lift us up so we can see over the walls. So our perspective is no longer blocked. So our perspective is no longer skewed. We have to have people around us to help us to see. It lifts your perspective. So as long as you're looking at your life behind walls, as long as you're looking at the wall and not what God has for you behind the wall, you'll never, never get to where God is calling you to be. Sometimes you need help. And so when we come to church, we hear people give testimonies of what God has done for me. God has done this for me. You may think that testimony of victory in your life doesn't mean anything to anybody else. But testimonies of victory will help people to see over the wall. When you tell people what God has done for you, that will lift you up a little bit higher. Maybe, maybe he can do that for me. So your perspective will change. Your perspective will change. Secondly, number two, second reason that a lot of us stop short because progress in our steps are not always tangible. We can't always see progress in our steps. Now, I'm a person that, that I, I, when I'm doing something, I like to see progress along the way. I don't like to do something and there's no end to it. You know, give me give me some 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 marks, some some you know where I can say, okay, I've I've come here. I've made it to this point. But when there's no end in sight, when there's when there's no bookmarks, when there there's no place that you can say I've made it to, it makes it difficult to continue to go forward. It makes it difficult because if if you don't know where you're going to, then you always feel like, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm lost. And that's how many of us feel when we're trying to find where God has called us to. We feel lost because 
we don't see any progress. And just because you don't see any progress, that doesn't mean progress is not being made. God is often working behind the scenes and you don't, you don't know anything about it. I mean, I, I, think about, I think about how they were walking around the walls of Jericho and nothing is happening. You know, you would think that maybe God would let a rock fall off the wall or, you know, something starts shaking or, you know, just, just to let you know something is happening. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And our lives are like that. You know, we're praying, we're fasting, we're, we're, we're doing what we think that we should be doing, and we're coming to church, and we're, we're praying, and we see nothing that looks like what we see God's calling us to do. Or we, we see nothing that looks like think, making things change. But don't be worried. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it cause you to give up. Because even though you don't see the progress, it's happening. So God speaks to Joshua, and he says, march around the wall. On the seventh day, march seven times, and it's going to happen. These walls are coming down, but none of this stuff is, is looking like it's going to happen because there's no progress going on. So they're making progress because God is working on the inside. They don't feel like they're making progress, but they are making progress. Trust God. Somebody say, trust God. Trust God is doing something even when you don't see anything happening. Trust God is working for you even though you don't see the, the, the physical evidence. Too many times we're waiting on physical evidence. And if we don't see the physical evidence, then, then our faith dwindles. But that's not what faith is about. Faith is, is about what you can't see, right? If we can just trust God through all of our, our temptations, all of our trials, all of the hardships, then we'll persevere and see what God has promised. So they continued walking around six days. Seven, seven days, soldiers had no idea this was the time that, I mean, because they'd been walking around six days. They had no idea that seven days was going to be any different. Why would it be? I hadn't seen no rocks falling. I hadn't seen, you know, nothing shaking. We don't have any equipment to knock the wall down. Why, why should today be any different? But on the seventh day, trumpet blew. That's when the wall came down. My, my, uh, I was in basic training, and I went through basic training. It, it was there was something about basic training that I, I, I just couldn't. They, they would wake us up early in the morning. We'd go on these runs. Never knew where you were going to run to. Never knew how long you were going to run. Never knew how fast you were going to run. But you just run. <laughs> and, and it was like, you know, please let us know. You know. This is what you're feeling. Please let us know how where we're going to, what the course is going to be. Then we can, make, we can have this in our minds that, you know, make a mental note. This is where we end. So when you start getting toward the end, then you start feeling pretty good. But, but, but the, the uh, children of Israel had no idea where the end was. They never knew when the walls were going to fall down. They never knew when their victory was coming. They just had to keep walking behind uh, Joshua. When God calls you or gives you a, 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 a dream, gives you a destination, when he, when he calls you to a purpose, sometimes you've got to keep going and not know 
how far you got to go. But you just got to keep going. Got to keep going. It'll feel like, oh, Lord, I'm tired. It's been years, Lord, that this has been going on. It's been years since, since you told me that you were going to bless my marriage been years since you told me that you were going to open this door. It's been years since you told me you were going to give me a better job. It's been years since you told me you were going to heal my body. And you just give up. And I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I'm just about finished. The question is, let, let me get to my Third point is, the reason that we stop short is because the process is open-ended. Process. Normally, when God tells you he's going to do something, he doesn't give you day, date, hour. When God makes a promise, he doesn't say, Monday, 12 p.m. Now, I know, I know some preachers will tell you, by such and such time, But God normally doesn't tell you exactly when he's going to do something, exactly when what he's called you to do is going to manifest. He doesn't, he doesn't actually tell you that, hey, I'm going to do this and, and, and be at the mailbox because I'm, it's coming through. <laughs> but he just tells you this is what I'm going to do. He puts it in your heart. He puts it in your spirit. And, and something about it, you can't get away from it. Even, when, even when, you, when you try to say, well, I'm finished, it, it, it's all over with, it keeps pulling you, it keeps drawing you, it keeps, it, it, it keeps going over and over in your mind. This is what God has told me. But it's open-ended. And I, I, most of us don't like open-ended stuff. But if you want to receive what God has promised you, if you want to get to where God has told you he, he's going to take you, you've got to be open to being led by an open-ended promise. Otherwise, you will not receive what he's called you to do. So, the, so we, 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 we look at what Joshua and the children of Israel did. We look at where they walked around and around and around with nothing happening. And my question to you this morning is, will you continue to walk when there's no progress? Will you continue to follow when things are not happening like you thought they would happen? Will you continue to seek the face of God when what he's told you, you see no way of it happening? Will you continue to say yes, God, even when everything around you seems like it's saying no? Will you continue? Even when, even when you're feeling, seems like things are getting worse in your life rather than better. Even when, 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 People do you like, like Job's wife says, you ought to just curse God and die. Will you still continue on? Will you, will you still walk with me? Will you still pray? Will you still seek my face? Will you still come to church? Will you still fast? Will you still call on my name? I'm closing here, but I, I, I just want you to, to, to understand that everything that we consider precious in this life, everything that we consider something important in our life, gold, pearl, diamonds, all of that goes through a traumatic process before it's what we consider to be valuable. And I want to say to you this morning, you are valuable to God. What God has called you to, what God has promised you, it, he didn't do it haphazardly. He didn't do it off the top. He did it because you are valuable to him. 
And everything valuable has to go through a traumatic process. But you got to go through the process. You got to go through the process. Or you'll never be, you'll never retain that value that you're supposed to have. You know, a diamond is a diamond whether, whether it's refined or not. But it's not valuable until it is refined. And what I want to say to you this morning is don't stop now. Don't stop short of what God has for you. Don't stop uh, because you feel like it's not happening quick enough. Don't stop. Don't stop. Because God has it for you. God wants you to receive what he has placed within your heart. But if you don't continue, if you don't persevere, you'll never receive what God has. Amen. When I was lost in sinking.